Hello, this is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from Fanbara International Air Show 2022. And we have someone with us who we all love in India. He's the man behind Boeing in India, Salil Gupte, President Boeing in India. Uh, Salil, wonderful to have you on our chat show as always. Looking forward to some wonderful conversation. And we begin with this fact that we are here in Fanbra. And uh, what is new for India from here? Well, look, I, I think, first of all, just being back at Fanbra, being at, at, a, at a major air show like this, you know, is a big deal globally. Of course, in India, we have continued to have our shows. You know, we had Aero India last year in the midst of the pandemic that was managed extremely well. Um, but you know, having uh, having a global show like this is big because it brings many different nations together. It of course follows Riyadh that was just uh, uh, earlier last week here, where you had many people from many defense services coming together to talk about cooperation in different areas, including technology uh, and, and platform capabilities and interoperability. So I think the fact that we're all here at Farnborough symbolizes a world that is recovering from the pandemic and. Hopefully, the the business of defense and aerospace uh, can catch a tailwind uh, from that recovery as well. And you know, in the backdrop you're sitting is that beautiful F-15. Mm -hmm. So what is new and latest on the F-15 front for India? Well, so the F-15 EX, we've received you know, the license to, to offer that to India uh, from the U.S. government. But... Uh, at this point, the next steps as it relates to the requirements uh, for the Indian Air Force campaign, you know, that we'll, we're waiting to hear that from the Air Force. So I think once that comes out, uh, we will, you know, we will we'll take our next steps accordingly. So Salil, you know, we just had that uh, wonderful trials of the F-18 mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, with uh, Tom Cruise in India, it was wonderful, you know, it was just great. So what is the development on that front? Is it all over? Do we hear the news? Uh... Well, they, the, uh, the Super Hornet uh, operational demo in Goa uh, you know, went well. We had two aircraft uh, that, that came over, um, were supported by a large team of both U.S. Navy and Boeing. Um, and, uh, this, of course, followed up on the, um, the ski jumps that already occurred last year uh, at Pax River in the U.S. So, you know, the Super Hornet had already proven its capability. Uh, at that at that trial uh, last year, and then these operational demos uh, in Goa uh, were the latest uh, were the latest trials required uh, by the Indian Navy. And one important factor with India in focus, uh, which we would like to understand, is that uh, what is happening on the front for uh, you know all the ones which are already there with the MOD and we're waiting to hear. So the platforms that are already there or? Uh, already there with the MOD and we're waiting to hear what's going to be new on their front. Is there going to be something new on the procurement front for them? Well, let me, so let me start. Uh, I think one very important, well, of course, you know, we can never talk about where campaign processes are with MOD. I can say this, um, with the platforms that we already have, in India, whether you're talking about C-17s, whether you're talking about Apache rotorcraft, Chinook rotorcraft, uh, P-8s, uh, one thing that we that I know that MOD is focused on, that the Defense Services are focused on, is the continued localization of sustainment capability in India. Right? Because when we think about operational readiness for the Defense Services, that is a huge part of it. Yes, the reliability, maintainability, quality of the platform itself and the ability for the platform to meet the mission requirements that were set out by the Defense Services, that's all critical. But the sustainment piece, having the supply chain capability in India, having the MRO capability in India, uh, and having the program management to actually manage that whole process for the defense services to achieve operational readiness is something that we at Boeing have been very focused on with the defense services and the MOD over the past several years. That's why we formed a company in India, Boeing Defense India, to focus on that sustainment. 
and the MOD and the Defense Services right now for the platforms that are already here. Uh, because you know, sometimes when we're all focused on the next new platform, we lose sight of that. But that is so, so incredibly important, that sustainment piece. And is there some talk, you know, like we've heard on the follow-on orders for some of these? Well, we know that for some of the, you know, for some of the orders, the requirements are already clear, right? The requirements were announced some time ago. Uh, and we know that there was a requirement for additional P8s that was, that it's been over a couple of years now that that, that was that, that information was released by the Navy and MOD. Uh, and so, you know, that we've been working uh, with Navy uh, closely on that. Um, there's a few things with regards to the P-8. We know that it's a platform um, whose capabilities can't be replicated by any other platform, manned or unmanned, um, in uh, pretty much any catalog of any OEM anywhere in the world. Uh, and the Navy uh, operates it accordingly. So, you know, we know that that's an extremely capable, unique platform, uh, and we've built in a sustainment capability, both MRO and then a world-class training facility uh, in Rajali that's, uh, that's been handed over uh, to uh, the Navy as well. So everything that we need uh, for that aircraft uh, to be you know, maintained in India and operated in India, um, along with any other user of the P-8 uh, you know, globally, right up there with the best operators of the P-8, uh, we know that we have that capability in India. And uh, you know, my next question would be on the tanker requirement. Mm -hmm. India needs them, you have them. Now, we know what happened to the last tender. So, I mean, taking on from there, it's the makeshift arrangement India has at the moment. So have you heard from the government uh, on the tanker requirement? Anything which has come from them to you? Well, I think you know, we're, we're in discussions with, uh, with the Air Force on their requirements for there. I know the U.S. government and is also in the U.S. Air Force is also talking to uh, the Indian Air Force for requirements there. But beyond that, you know, the Air Force will have to provide more color. On, on how they want to move forward. And India also for you is a big R&D base. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, what is the, uh, you know, development on that front? Well, uh, we have grown uh, to almost 4,000 employees in India uh, over, the, over the past few years. And uh, we have over 7,000 in our supply chain. But those 4,000 employees that are Boeing employees, many of them are focused on hardcore aeronautical design engineering. Some are doing data analytics and software that supports the platforms, but many of them are focused on aircraft systems, uh, electrical systems, uh, flight tests and evaluation and research and development to drive the next generation of technologies that are going to improve the platforms that we already have, but then also uh, help develop uh, the next gen platform. And uh, what else is new on Boeing front, uh, apart from all these, you know? So we want to hear something new, uh, well, which I'm sure only you'll be able to tell us. Well, so I think here's the thing that's new. Um, I think in India, from a policy standpoint, um, civil, aviation, and defense aerospace have kind of been going down two tracks. And, and the government and industry have been trying to grow both of those. Right? And as we all know, India on the civil side is going to be the third largest market in the world the next couple of years. In defense, it is, of course, one of the, the largest you know, defense budgets globally and you know, is, is a big investor in defense capability. But harnessing the synergy between those two is something that we have been working very hard on. Because as you think about building that Atmanirbha Bharat capability for self-reliance in India, you have to bring those together to bring scale and cost efficiency. That is what is going to help India develop its best indigenous capability. And that is also what's going to help India become an export power uh, in defense and aerospace. So this is something that we're actually particularly focused on for uh, manufacturing, uh, and, but also for engineering. Um, so that's new, and I think that's going to be an initiative that will continue uh, for years to come. Thank you so much, Salil. That was wonderful. And, you know, it's very, very nice for our audience to get to know from the horse's mouth. <laughs> it's so rare. So thanks a ton. Wonderful to have you on ADO's chat room. Always for you, Sangeeta. Thank you.